Uh, this question is on high bar squatting. Um, I squat pretty high bar. It's something I started doing when I got into multiply gear for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it helps me stay more upright when I squat and that's really critical. And two, the straps on the suits are ridiculously thick and I just I couldn't hold a lower bar position. It was really unstable because the strap was so thick I had no natural shelf on my body. It took it away. So what I do, um, this is a little weird walking out, but the key is I try to get so I'm under the bar. I come up past the bar and then I back into the bar. And the key is when you unrack is you want to drive your hips forward so you're in a straight line. And at this point, you know, I can stand here pretty easily. Um, the key is when you unrack, as you get more weight, it'll be more of an issue. Is it's going to kind of rattle. You want to wait. You want to let it settle. Then you want to take your first step back. You're going to want to let it settle if the bar's whipping on you. You're going to take the second step. Some people have to do a third step. So it's more if you start out narrower, it would be back back out, out, but um, you shouldn't really need more than three steps. At that point, you're set up, you're upright, you want to drive your head back into the bar, and then you want to start by breaking at your hips. So you want to push your hips back. And that's the key to everything. Because if you don't initiate that right, your knees are going to start pitching forward and you're not going to recover. So you want to push your hips back, you want to stay as arched as you can, and then just drive your knees out, and sit back, and then up. So and then the key when you're at the bottom is, when you're here, you don't want to, your legs shouldn't really be your first move. You want to actually just drive back into the bar, because you want to keep your chest up the whole time like this. So when you come up, you should be like that. You don't want to be like this because then you're going to turn it into a good morning. So you want head back, drive back, and up. And then when you rack it, most of us just throw it in. All right, uh, I'm going to be demonstrating a low bar squat than Marcus. Um, when in gear, I actually do carry the bar a little bit higher because of the strap issue, like uh, Marcus stated, but uh, squatting raw, I tend to be a little bit lower. Becky actually carries the bar the lowest out of all of us, or she used to. Um, she's actually changing over to a high bar squat because, or a higher bar squat because she can't keep up right with the low bar position. But uh, to demonstrate the uh, the key for the low bar is getting your shoulder blades pinned back and getting that shelf built on your back. So I'll uh, get under the bar, and it's really rear delts, top of my tr uh, bottom of my traps, spinal erectors, bars right about here. So uh, if you can see that, keep your shoulder blades pinned back and together to get the shelf going. Stand up, bar ain't going nowhere. Uh, you want to drive your elbows forward to keep your chest up. Take your steps out. Same thing, initiate backwards with the hips, keep your traps driving into the bar, and spread your knees as you come down. Hit depth, recover. And the key is to keep the hips under the bar because if you get your hips behind the bar, or get your hips in, well, you can't get your hips in front of the bar, but if you get your hips behind the bar, you'll start to good morning. You'll be leaned over real far and you'll go like this and good morning it up. And it's just very inefficient. You're not going to squat big. But if you keep your hips under the bar and keep your chest up, you're going to be nice and tight and in that groove. Just pop back up. Um, low bar can be pretty hard on your shoulders and your wrists. Uh, a lot of people wear wrist wraps with it. Um, and squatting low bar can, like I said, really mess up your shoulders. A lot of people like a muffler bar, a safety squat bar for a lot of their squats right now. Okay, uh, going further into the squat thing is uh, differences between raw and geared squatting. We're also going to cover differences between walkout and monolith squatting. Um, for raw, generally you'll have a narrower stance. Um, a lot of times that's because raw lifts, you're also walking them out. Um, but 
your hips won't be able to take as wide of a stance as you do when you're squatting in like multiply gear, when you're squatting raw. It's just going to hurt too much. Um, there are people who can handle a, a wide stance raw. I'm one of them. I can squat pretty much out here raw, get depth, be fine. But even if I'm doing like a raw max or a raw meat, I'll bring my stance in because you're going to need more quads. You know, your hamstrings and glutes are, are, can be strong, but when you're wearing gear, the gear helps you out of the hole. So you're going to want some quads out of the hole. And you still want to push your knees out and get that, get your hips under you. But raw, you're going to want a little bit of a narrow stance so you can include more muscles coming out of the hole. Um, when you're walking out of squat, geared or, or raw, you're going to be a little bit narrower too just because it's hard to take steps, big steps with the weight on your back. And more importantly, it's hard to keep your lower back arch tight under the weight because as you walk, it's bouncing, you get a little loose, you get try to get tighter before you go, but the weight's on your back already. It's not going to be easy to get that arch back. When you're in a monolift, you can sit up as wide as you want with gear, get your arch going, get everything super tight unrack and you're good to go. So uh, those are the major differences. It's really in your stance, how narrow, how wide you can get. The wider you are, the more hip strength you're going to need. And that's where the gear really, really helps because um, it just keeps everything tight back there and it actually provides that rebound out of the hole. When you're raw, you're going to need a little bit more quads and you're going to need a little bit more muscul musculature involved to get out of the hole.